Cultural Safari. Hi guys. Um, well, here we are. This is a presentation I normally give in front of you, but given what's going on right now, we're going to do this virtually. So I'm recording this presentation for you to look at at your leisure. The sketchbook. Um, the sketchbook's really important to me, uh, and I think it's important to a lot of you as well. Today I just want to kick off this class and talk about a few things. I want to talk about sketchbook gear, sketches, some drawing prompts, thoughts and ideas I have around drawing, and some artist examples uh, of uh, illustrators that do keep sketchbooks and some of that reportage style. So first off, sketchbook gear. Uh, I'm a nerd on this stuff. I will nerd out. So when I do see you all again, we will talk more in detail. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll give you a quick overview of what I what I use in my bag. And I have a number of things that I like. I'm a big fan of the fountain pen, uh, primarily because when you make a mark, you're kind of stuck with it. Um, I'm a noodler by nature, so if I have a pencil, which I still do draw on pencil, of course, but if I have a, a pencil, I will tend to kind of want to make that drawing perfect. So by drawing with ink, I'm committing to that line, whether I like it or not, and then I have to work with what I have on the page. Um, I think a lot of you can relate to that uh, if you make a mark on a page and you feel like it's uh, wrong, you, you, that page is spoiled. So this is a way that I can get around that. Um, these are a number of things that I like to use. I used to like to make little watercolor tins. I have tins for all of you, so at some point I would love to get those to you. It's something we put together this semester along with some other projects uh, that we won't be able to do since we're going online for the rest of the semester. Uh, but feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, so these are a number of the tools that I like. Uh, there's some flexible nib um, uh, fountain pens. We have some different brands up there. My favorite is the Pelican M20, which is right there towards the right-hand side of the line of, uh, of fountain pens. So we can talk more in detail about those. And I think I'll probably put together some little demos that I might put up as well just to, to, to uh, help you understand some of the things I'm talking about. These are some other tools uh, that I like to use. So basically, you all are already doing this. Um, I keep a, kind of a to-go bag of things that I can carry. Uh, I think some of you have probably potentially seen me carry it around. So something you can do is make your own travel watercolor kit. And of course, this is what I would be handing them out to you. Uh, but you can make them out of a number of items. Uh, I do have some blank tins or empty tins for you, but also Altoid tins work really well or anything like that, any kind of mint tin. Um, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can take uh, discarded lids from water bottles, uh, soda bottles, things like that, and you can put your paint, your watercolor paint from a tube into those um, containers. And I like to use little double stick magnetic strips. It's sticky on one side and it's magnetic on the other. And you can stick those to the bottom of the um, material that you're using. And uh, if you were using a uh, top of a lid, or you can also be using, you could use uh, what you see watercolor full pans, and you see some half pans there as well, which is that baggie to the left. And those are basically just little containers that hold the watercolor that you, um, you apply. Uh, you squeeze out from your tube, you let it sit for a couple hours, it, it solidifies, and then it just reactivates with the water. A lot of you are already doing that. Uh, something I like to do too. Plain air oil painting gear. Uh, this is something I have a paint box that I use that I would have been, I would be showing you right now that allows to be portable with my uh, oil paints. Um, but something that I have uh, started to do with you all, and I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because it's a little bit easier to look at uh, to understand if you're physically there. But um, these are some of the materials that I use along with my paint box and some. Uh, things of that nature. We would have we would have been building some Pashad boxes or some paint boxes, but at this point, um, that's on hold. Uh, reportage. Reportage is from the old French reporter, uh, to report, to bring back, to carry. So that's something that I really like to do uh, when I go out uh, uh, into the field and draw. Uh, normally, we'd be going out into the, the community as a group and drawing, but that's not available to us right now, so we'll be doing some other activities in lieu of that. Uh, something they had the opportunity to do a number of, a uh, couple, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Um, a friend of mine is a jazz, two years ago, yes, in this October. 
a, a friend of mine is a jazz musician here in town, and he, I uh, asked him if I could come in and draw he, him and his bandmates while they recorded a new album. And so these are some of the drawings that came out of that. And on the left there on that page, you can see uh, some of my piece, uh, my box that I brought in that I made that I used to, to transport my materials. And so these were all done in the moment um, while the musicians were performing. So you can see a lot of stray lines, a lot of misstarts, missteps with the line work. But in the end, I feel like it gives it a lot more soul, a lot more authenticity uh, when I draw. And then in the end, I ended up uh, taking all those drawings and combining them into, uh, digitally combine, scanning them in and combining them into a, an album cover that he's used for his album, which is pretty fun to do. Uh, having done this stuff for a while, I've, I've been involved with a few uh, drawing uh, organizations or you know sketching, online sketching uh, platforms that I've been asked to do some interviews for. So I've been able to do some watercolor kit, kit tips for Doodlers Anonymous. It's a quick little blog that I participated in. Um, there's a great uh, feature uh, item out there called Sketch Wallet, which basically it's a wallet that fits a small sketchbook and you take it with you. And they, a number of years ago, uh, a couple years ago again, they asked to do an interview with me and how I work. So they did a nice multi-page interview with me about uh, my practice as a sketchbook artist. Uh, Luckily and happily, I have been able to participate in Icon, uh, Icon Nine, and then, which was in Austin. I talked about um, my micro class, and then uh, the last Icon, Icon Ten, which was in Detroit. Uh, I submitted a paper on this this very subject, the sketchbook, and I was able to talk about the sketchbook in, in general, the sketchbook in particular, to my travels to China and keeping a sketchbook from that experience, and then also a sketchbooking in terms of why do we do that in general as we record our, uh, our experiences and what's around us. And that's something that I'll talk a little bit more in depth about in a later uh, recording. So I'm just gonna walk through some of these. Uh, these are some of the places that we would have uh, gone together. Uh, this is the River Market. And so this is the, one of the old streetcars that they're, they converted to uh, some sort of retail space or restaurant. Um, sat on the corner and drew this in my ink, my fountain pen, and then uh, with my watercolor. And my watercolor, I'm, I'm, and I'll do a little uh, demo on this. My watercolor, I like to use um, different brands, of course. But then uh, what I like to do is let the paper mix it. Uh, so I like to mix it on the actual paper versus mixing in my tin or my palette. So that's just another way to, for me, I just like some of the, the, the happy accents that, that happen along the way. These are some more um, images from the river market or the city market. Uh, this is uh, down there as well, which is funny because this is an actual, uh, these are a couple drawings of a, a Subaru Outback, um, which is of really no interest other than I like the way it was on the street, the incline of the street, um, kind of the comp composition. But ironically enough, uh, last November, I actually totaled my 17-year-old CRV, and in the event of replacing my car, I ended up replacing it with a Subaru Outback. So that was kind of strange that I have drawings of those. But again, I used the sketchbook to commemorate the passing of my beloved CRV. Things I like to draw, of course, I'm, I'm out with my kids. I draw my daughter, this is my daughter sitting at the pool reading a book. Um, we attend a lot of baseball games. We travel, or we have a, uh, we like to travel around and go to different ballparks from different cities. This one's actually in Kansas City, but we've been to a number of ballparks and I like to sit in the, in the stands and, and draw. This, we were to Baltimore last summer and this is a Baltimore Orioles. So it's nothing really, just kind of catching little bits and pieces from that experience. Again, working uh, in the neighborhood over uh, off of Gillum. This is pencil and ink. Um, something that some of you have already participated in. This was some earlier drawings from from last two years ago, I think, from uh, our cadaver drawings at the Kansas City University of Medicine Biosciences, which I think is a really amazing experience. And those of you that participated in that would uh, agree. So these are some drawings from those from that past experience. So just kind of capturing uh, 
the folks there working on the cadavers. And then something that we do, and unfortunately we will not be able to do again, is I line up uh, life drawings with the nude models. Um, so these are some models that I had um, I made images of alongside students uh, last year. So again, taking uh, to the left ink and watercolor, very direct. You can see the kind of the few false starts with some lines, and then to the right, I, the day, that day I'd forgotten. I forgot my paper, so I ended up using the back of the, of the old um, sketchbook, you know, backing cardboard, and then use some uh, gel pens and some collage on that one. This one is uh, just your straightforward landscape from uh, involved in scouts with my son. So this was done at camp last summer. So um, traveling it leaves you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. Uh, this is something that really hit home with me as I traveled to China uh, back in 2017 with my family. Uh, it was an interesting and very uh, impactful trip, uh, very different and culturally, obviously, than what uh, we were uh, accustomed to, especially from the Western uh, world. So this is a drawing of, a, of the jet, one of the jets uh, there. So China. We went to uh, Hong Kong, uh, which is very uh, an interesting combination of Western and Eastern uh, worlds. And then we actually ended up taking a train, a 24-hour sleeper train up to Beijing from Hong Kong. And then that was, of course, a very different um, experience as well along the way. So these are some drawings from Hong Kong, China. Um, on the left, I, don't know, and I have a sketchbook that I would be passing around to you right now that you can see, but these are some images from it. Uh, it's this little alley, uh, food alley there in Hong Kong. On the right is the Tian Tan Buddha, uh, which is um, actually it's not the Buddha himself. It is the actually one of the divas from the Buddha. And I will have some of those images here coming up. While there, uh, there were a lot of monks there on a pilgrimage to the Buddha. And so I got to, the chance to draw some of those individuals. And then an interesting uh thing happened uh, there's seven i believe seven six divas six divas around this giant buddha which i don't you don't see yet and uh they were they make these offerings to the buddha and then the uh, the monks themselves had little cameras and phones and they were themselves taking images of the buddha and it was interesting to see it compared to the divas that were alongside so both everyone's making an offering of some way some way shape or form to the buddha this is the Buddha's face from below. Again, as I mentioned, uh, you would be able to see a little bit, a few more of these images had we be had we been together. But this is what it is. Uh, this is uh, this is a street scene from Hong Kong. So I just kind of drew some things around while I was uh, draw traveling and walking around. So a lot of these images are drawn on the on the spot. Some of them are drawn then color, then painted later, and then some might even just be drawn from uh, quick snapshots um, that I would take as well. So just dependent, it's a combination of things, uh, but capturing in the end the experience, another uh, street scene. And if you see some, some of the bamboo there, scaffolding, they use bamboo as scaffolding, which is really strong, but um, light, so it's really interesting material you see inside of these Western buildings with the bamboo being used as a scaffolding for work to be done on those buildings. This is a gouache painting of the travels that we that we took from Hong Kong down at the bottom of the page, the cities we stopped through, and then we ended up in Beijing where the star is up there at the north. Um, and so it was a really interesting uh, experience to hop on a train and sleep overnight and not speak the language. And we were able to get around pretty, pretty well. Um, and if you look at the red shape of China. Uh, I was informed by a Chinese man that if you look at China, China is shaped like a giant rooster. And if you look closely, you can see it. This is a, a neighborhood where we stayed in, in Beijing called a, a, uh, a hutan, which uh, this is near Mr. Xi's dumplings, which is right there. Uh, we lived in the 65 by Baochao Hutong. Dongcheng Q Beijing Xi China. 
So I totally butchered that, but that was where we were staying. So this is a neighborhood basically of alleys that where folks live, everyday people live, and it was really fascinating and interesting. This is uh, the rooftop uh, of the building, one of the buildings. So these were not actually a traditional um, hotel. It was actually a uh, series of separate rooms scattered around these neighborhoods. So it was really, really cool. Uh, this is of uh, some the traveling uh, devices, apparatus, vehicles from China that I observed. Lots of interesting vehicles, uh, cool little um, three-wheeled uh, trucks here. Another uh, just snapshot of a Beijing street. Um, this is uh, another vehicle in this padlock to a, to a lamp light pole. So this painting is of my kids when we got back from, uh, we went up to Beijing and then back down to Hong Kong for a few days. And we were on the beach in South China Sea and this is the first time my kids had ever experienced this, a beach. And um, which was pretty special that we were in another country while this occurred. And this is by no means the best painting I've ever made. It's really pretty rough actually. But the fact of the matter is that I recorded something that was really dear, near and dear to me as my family and my kids experienced the beach for the first time. So there's little bits of sand, there's probably some insects, there's all kinds of stuff that's in this uh, painting that uh, is really, really dear to me. And so in, the, in, that, in that regard, it's probably the, one of the most dear things that I have from that trip. And something else that happened as I was experiencing that was I uh, was painting and a woman came up to me and touched me on the shoulder and she was Chinese. And she, you know, we didn't speak the same language, but she pointed to my sketchbook and I handed it over to her and let her flip through it. And she stopped on an image that I previously had shown you that uh, was from Beijing. And I had actually copied the characters of, of that, 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 made, that said Beijing. And um, she looked at it and she got excited and she pointed to herself and she said, basically through sign language, I'm from Beijing and this is a drawing from Beijing, which was really cool that we connected like that. And then she just sat down next to me for the next 30 minutes and watched me paint. And that was such an interesting way to make a connection with someone. Uh, and I did that through my sketchbook. And so she sat there for 30 minutes and watched me paint. And, and at the end of that 30 minutes, she touched me on the shoulder and uh, said goodbye and waved. And I will say, actually, I forgot one story. Here's the Great Wall of China. We actually had the opportunity to go about three hours outside of Beijing, hike the Great Wall. Uh, had the, had it to ourselves um, and actually got to pitch a tent and sleep on the Great Wall of China overnight and then get back up and continue our hike to another portion where we were then picked up. That was pretty amazing. But she was, this woman had been flipping through my sketchbook earlier as well and said, saw this image and she got excited again and she pointed to herself and she pulled her cell phone out and there it was. She had a picture of herself on the Great Wall from another portion of the Great Wall, which was pretty amazing. So we made so many connections in that brief time and all that was all attributed to my sketchbook. And I'm sure you've all had similar instances where someone's come up to you while you're drawing and asked to see what you're doing and then a conversation occurs. So these are some other drawings. And this is uh, some of the, on the left, the currency from Hong Kong, and on the right, uh, Chinese yuan currency. So why do we keep a sketchbook? Um, lots of the things we just talked about is a reason. Uh, it's a therapy for, for me as well, I'm sure for some of you as well, somewhere to get out your ideas and thoughts. It's a place, it's going to, a sketchbook is different for everyone. It can be something that we record ideas, work out ideas for a, for a project, or just record what's in front of us. Um, you're all familiar with the walking wall uh, and Andy Goldworthy's uh, walking wall. This is Andy Goldworthy on the left. I was commissioned uh, along with uh, Steve Mays created this, this book slash thank you uh, card for him through a, a, a benefactor and was asked uh, to record five different instances of the, of the uh, walking wall, so, um, which was really interesting. So I was able to work on this project. And so the idea was to, to do the five stages. So 
this ended up being the first stage of the walking wall. The idea being it done in a reportage manner in the moment. And the idea too that Mr. Goldworthy's idea was that when people become part of the wall as they're experiencing the wall and walking it because it's in process. So first stage, second stage, stage three, stage four, and stage five. And this was then given to him as a thank you uh, from uh, some of the benefactors that had, that had uh, commissioned that for the museum. Um, this next piece, this uh, piece on the right, this blue portrait piece, um, was ended up getting into three by threes uh, annual of contemporary illustration, and that was a, that was just a sketchbook piece that I was playing with. So that was just, that was done for no one, no other purpose other than to play and enjoy myself. And then, ironically, it's something that that then gets recognized. And I think sometimes we work so hard to make some things uh, contrived or um, engineered to get recognition and they don't and then in this case I did something which you'll hear a lot we should talk about is do things that are really important to you things that you want to do and those will what people will recognize the passion in those things I share this uh, this is Faulkner and Locke they are a um, firm down in Atlanta Georgia who when uh, the two light apartment building downtown was built they were looking to house it with art from local artists and ironically enough somebody in Georgia located me uh, to do work here in Kansas City uh, but that being said <clears throat> I share this story because they wanted something they looked online and found my sketchbook stuff and that's what ended up getting me the the job so this is a giant digital mural um, of the uh, famous Kansas City and so as you can see uh, there's, there's a giant drawing. So this was digitally reproduced. I did a drawing, a, a char uh, graphite and charcoal drawings, and then those were digitally reproduced to put, be put on the wall. But then in, that ended up in another um, job for their uh, interiors, for their uh, public kitchen in this space. So those two big uh, faces that you see, uh, I got to do those too, and that just all led to because of my sketchbook again, my sketchbook. Um, and then uh, there were some of the guys from the Queer Eye cast that were in town for when they were in Kansas City, and they were had posted a video of themselves dancing in front of one of my murals, which was pretty fun. Uh, recently, I just donated a piece to the Kansas City Artists Coalition auction, and I was asked to do a skateboard deck, which um, when I taught sophomore uh, classes, when I taught. Um, graphic form for illustrators, one of my, my assignments was a skateboard deck. So it was kind of fun. I got to revisit that again. And this was just basically a drawing I took out of my sketchbook. Then I just turned myself loose and started painting and had fun with that. So that was another way that the sketchbooks go beyond their original form. Uh, drawing prompts. We're going to be having to rely a lot on these this semester, the rest of the semester due to the fact that we're uh, going to be working together remotely. Um, I won't read through these, but I will. I have shared these on the uh, Google Classroom where you can uh, download those PDFs. But these are some prompts that we'll be talking about um, as we work through the semester. Again, we normally would use these prompts in coinciding with visiting locations, um, but that's not feasible as a group. Um, but I think there are still there's still room even through the social distancing that you can go for long walks. Uh, obviously, keeping your distance, but um, observing nature, uh, things. So we'll talk more about that. And I have some thoughts and ideas. Um, when we have a new sketchbook, it's sometimes very intimidating. And I don't know how many times I've done this where I've made a mark in the front of a sketchbook and then I feel like I've contaminated that sketchbook and it's not of use to me anymore. So something that can take that away is start in the middle of the sketchbook and don't work chronologically. I, I did that with I do that with all my sketchbooks now, but especially the one from if, uh, from China. It was all over the place. It was not in chronological order. Um, I kind of moved around sometimes because you know the paint wasn't dry yet, so I had to move to another page. Um, things of that nature. Uh, think about drawing without mercy. And it is this is a quote. I can't remember where I got it from. I, well, I stole it from, but I think it is for me. It means just don't be afraid to put that mark down. That's where I started using the ink pens, the fountain pens. Um, this is something that once I make that mark, I got to live with it. And then I can then end up with something that I really like actually, rather than something that I labored over. 
I've touched on this already, rather than buying a souvenir, make a drawing, painting, or collage from your travels. I still got a stack of newspapers from China, uh, things, little stuff, stubs here and there for trains and and planes and and thing and subways and things like that. So I'm, eventually that's going to become work as well. A book that I'd be passing around right now is called The Zen of Seeing uh, by Frederick Frank. I would encourage you to um, look into this. Uh, he has a number of books, but this guy is very... Um, it's been very inspirational to me, uh, and I discovered him a little bit later. He was a doctor that, that became an artist, or was an artist that was a doctor, however you want to look at it. And he had some really interesting ideas. Um, become the thing, the object, the person you're drawing. He talks about, too, about how we're all taught to make that, that, that object, that thing, you know, exactly how we see it. So, you know, you think about when you first started to draw, you probably had how to draw books, and you know, to draw a horse, you draw a big rectangle, then you draw a big triangle, then you start you know, working out the proportions, which are very important, and it's very important to know how to draw that way, but also, um, that's partly why I, I like to keep my drawings the way I do, where I let it let them tell me what they want to be, and being very direct, and very, uh, very visceral in a lot of ways. Um, so in his handwritten and illustrated book, The Zen of Seeing, Drawing as Meditation, Frank writes about experiencing the world by participating in that particular moment in time and seeing it with new eyes. He calls it seeing, drawing, becoming the thing, the object, the person you're drawing, heartily giving yourself over to your surroundings as you record it, making a connection with the sights, smells, tastes, and sounds that come with that situation. Which kind of feeds into his cosmic unconsciousness, uh, which he speaks of Buddhahood. Uh, experiencing the world in the Zen state of connecting, seeing, and evolving. The act of keeping a sketchbook connects me in an impactful way to myself, to my family, to others that we meet along the way in specific moments, moments in time. And I've, I've touched on that uh, from, from the, the particular travels to China. But it happens every day when I'm out sketchbooking at you know, like one of my kids' events or, or sitting in a, in, a, in a neighborhood restaurant or whatever that might be. Uh, no longer do I look at the leaf, but enter into direct contact with its life process, with life itself, with what I, I, I too really am. So here are some artist examples. Um, this guy, Felix Scheinberger, I thought this is, he has a great Instagram. Uh, there also is a book that I recommend that he, a couple, three books that he has. Dare to Sketch is one I think is really great. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, check out uh, Gabby Capernon or Campanario. Yeah, I believe he's Seattle or Pacific Northwest somewhere. I think he's a newspaper uh, reportage artist. Uh, Lynn Polly, beautiful work. If you're not familiar with her stuff, check it out. Robert Weaver, uh, any of you that have John Ferry, you've been exposed to Robert Weaver. And Robert, these are some beautiful drawings by Robert Weaver. Veronica Lawler's a uh, contemporary artist right now, too, and uh, or uh, as some of the first ones I showed you, uh, Veronica Lawler does beautiful work. Baron's Story, while well, these are not truly uh, reportage drawings, these are sketchbook drawings and very interesting, very cool work. And he's influenced a ton of, of illustrators. And some beautiful sketchbook work, so some collage and inks and things of that nature. Ralph Steadman, of course, a lot of you are familiar with Ralph Steadman. His stuff uh, feels like sketchbook stuff because he does it very directly. Uh, hopefully you were all able to go see, and I believe he did with John's class, the uh, Stedman show down at the library last semester, which was really impressive. Paul Hogarth. So looking at uh, architecture. Some contemporary folks, Oliver Kugler. Heinrich Drescher, um, this collage uh, drawing type, things like that. Uh, there's a, um, there is a uh, or online source resource called Doodlatics, which I'd encourage you. It's free to join. Uh, you can post up to one image uh, a, uh, at a time. And it's a community where folks from all over the world, professionals and amateurs together, just kind of share their work. I have a, I have a, an account on there, and it's been great to kind of get to know and, and see people's other, other people's work. So I would say encourage you to take care advantage of that. Uh, good, I'm ending right at 30 minutes, so this is good. Um, this would have been more uh, inclusive of questions and a little more conversation. 
uh, as I went through this uh, presentation, but in lieu of being able to do that, um, shoot me any emails, video, uh, face, uh, we're going to be using Google Hangouts, I believe, or Google, whatever Google names their video conferencing now. That's how we'll be meeting on occasion that way as well. So thank you, and I will talk to you guys soon.